6.3 covers the graphs of trigonometric functions using radians. So basically this is going to be about a five minute lesson because you have graphed a lot of trigonometric functions last year using degrees and all we're doing is changing it to radians. So let's take a look first of all of a unit circle here so we can figure out some of the points. So if you don't have a copy of, of a unit circle like this, it's probably a good idea just um, so you understand where everything comes from. You know, like pi over 6, 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90. So it's just showing you the x and y coordinates for a unit circle. And again, a unit circle is just a circle that has a radius of one unit. So when we look at graphing the graph of sine theta, remember that the period of a trigonometric function was 360 degrees. In other words, that's the time it takes for something to go all the way around the circle. And now we've described this 360 rotation as being two pi radians. So that makes the math really easy. You're working with two. What's half of two? One. What's half of one? One half. So you can very easily break your graph into, into quarters. And so we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Easy. And going the other way, you could put in the same things with your negative values. So what I'm going to do is graph between for theta between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. Always check the domain that your teacher asks for, because remember that a trigonometric function is uh, never ending. So you could do it for 100 pi's if you wanted. That would be kind of silly though, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's take a look at the values. You should remember the sine theta. Sine theta is y over r. So when we are at zero, let's take a look here for a second. So y over r would be zero over one, which is zero. When we get to, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry, what am I saying zero over one? It's y over, y over r is zero over the radius one, not this one, this is x. y over x is 10, right? We'll look at that one a little bit later. Okay, so we have zero here, pi over two is one. And if you're ever writing a test and you don't remember where to go, just remember that you can ask your calculator. Some kids had trouble knowing where to start it. Um, you can put in sine of zero and you will get zero. And the sine of 90 degrees if you can't remember the radians. So we have a trig function that looks like this and this is your sine function. It's what we call a sinusoidal function or a wave function. And it has a maximum and a minimum of one and minus one. So you have it like this, comes down like this, and like this. So try not to make pointy graphs when you're doing, I hate it when kids do this. It's not a trig function. Can't have these peaky things on it. Okay, don't do that. Okay, so what is the period? The period is two pi. The axis, well, that's the line that goes right through the middle of it here. So the axis here would just be y equals zero. The line y equals zero. What is the amplitude? The amplitude is how far does it go up from here, from the axis up. So it's an amplitude of one. The maximum is one. The minimum is minus one. And the domain is theta such that theta is an element of real numbers. We have no restriction on the domain. We do have a restriction on the range. The range goes from what's its high and low. So this is when you're talking about just sine theta though, right? We're going to transform those in the next chapter. So y such that um, negative 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1. And there you go. Okay, so we've got the domain and range, the graph done. Now what's the difference between sine theta and cos theta? Well, cos theta is x over r. So if we go back to this unit circle here, if I do x over r, that would be 1 over 1, because the radius is 1. So the sine of 0 is 1 over 1, which is 1. So the cos one is the one that starts on the y-axis right here. Now, the easiest way, I always tell my students to break your graph into quarters. Okay, so that's that's the easy way to start it because some people get all mixed up in, in making the, the graph itself. 
So if it starts at one, it has to end at one because it's one complete cycle, right? So if those are the two highs, the lowest has to be in the middle, which is at pi. And then the zeros fall right into place for you very nicely. Make it nice and curvy, bring it down, swoop it around and up. So that's one complete cycle. And again, that's two pi. So the period is going to be two pi. And we do the same thing over here. So again, break it into quarters. Minus pi, minus pi over two, minus three pi over two. You should be able to do that very quickly. And start and end at the highest point. So get your end points. The middle has to be at the zero. Or sorry, not zero. The middle is the lowest point because we had the high, the low, and the zeros here. So there you go again. Okay, so what's the difference between a sine and a cosine function? Well, it's just, if I asked you, is this a sine function or a cosine function, you could tell me it could be either, unless I told you what it had to be. Because it could be a cos function shifted pi over 2 to the right, right? If I started here, I'd have a cos function. And same thing with this, if I wanted it to be, it could be a negative sine function if I moved it to here, or a positive sine function would be I moved it pi over 2 to the left. The axis is the same as the, the sine function. The amplitude is the same. The max is the same. The min is the same. The domain is the same. Theta, such that theta is an element of real numbers. And the range is exactly the same. So that's when you have problems if a teacher says, is this a sine or a cosine function? You say, well, it could be a transformed sine function. But if you're looking for just basic sine, theta, cos, theta, then these are your babies to go to. Okay, so let's take a look at the tan function because that's the only one that is a little different. Okay, so tan theta. Remember, when we have tan theta, tan theta is y over x. y over x. So if we look at our graph here, our unit circle, so if we do y over x, so 0 would be 0 over 1, which is 0. So let's put that one on here first. And then let's write on our pi, 2 pi. Divide into quarters. It's really easy to graph any trig function if you've got it divided into two quarters. Minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi over 4, minus 2 pi over 2. Minus pi over 2, minus 3 pi over 2. And there you go. Okay, so I had the zero. So remember, all the time I'm looking for y over x. So y over x, zero over one. Zero can be divided by one, that's zero. That's my first point. Um, these ones are a little hard to figure out. Well, you could do them, but we don't really care. Well, how about this one? Let's do this. What's y over x? What's one over root two divided by one over root two? One over root two divided by one over root two is one. So at pi over four, the tan is one. So pi over four, well, that's not pi over four, that's pi over two there. Who wrote that on there? Not me. And what did I write here? Minus pi over three. Hey, is anybody else watching this video? You're gonna think I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so at pi over four though, it is one. So let's call this one here. So that's right there. And you should know that because that's your um, your exact value for pi over 4, right? Pi over 4, that's 1, 1 square root 2. So 10 of pi over 4 is 1 over 1, which of course is 1. So that's a, a nice easy point for you to find, pi over 4. And look what happens at pi over 2. Let's take a look again back at our unit circle. So I'm doing y over x, I have 1 over 0. And that should ring all sorts of alarm bells for you because you can't divide by 0 in math. So, or in anything. So 1 over 0 means it's going to be undefined at pi over 2. So we have an asymptote at pi over 2. Okay, let's find another asymptote here. So I had 1 over 0. This is 0 over minus 1. So at, at uh, pi, it's going to be 0 again. So let, let's put that dot on here. This is another 0. And at 3 pi over 2, look, we've got minus 1 over 0. So again, 
minus one divided by zero, that's a no-go. It's also an asymptote. So you're gonna put that in here. And it just so happens that all the asymptotes happen at pi over two, minus three pi over two, minus five pi over two, and every every um, period thereafter. And of course, the period of the tan function happens to be one, right? Okay, so let's look at minus pi over four, because we had one for this one. What's minus pi over four? If I go negative pi over four, that would be the same as seven pi over four. And I have minus one over root two divided by one over root two. So that would give me negative one, right? Okay, so here's my negative one here. So the function, the tan function goes like this. It comes through here and then it goes up like this. It's very pretty. And the same thing happens here. So these are the related acute angles where we also have one and minus one. So we could keep going here forever and ever, but we won't. And so they want it between, the question says between, for theta between minus two pi and pi, I have to make sure I finish my graph properly and go to two pi here. So that's going to bring this one up to here. And the same thing's happening here. So you can just keep making your nice, beautiful little kind of S-shaped curves. This would be coming down like this. And it's going to go through and down the other side. Okay, so that's, that's my tan function. Y equals tan theta. Easy to graph. Okay, let's take a look at the period, though, because the period happens between minus, two, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the period is pi. The axis is still y equals 1. The amplitude, ooh, what are we going to do about the amplitude? Well, this time there is no amplitude. Like There is no max and min, so you can't, you can't define it. So it's undefined. Max or minimum values, none. Because if you plugged in something really close to pi over 2, you would go higher and higher and higher. So it's approaching just like in all the other graphs where we worked with asymptotes, it approaches this. Um, what is the domain? Well, we have to restrict the domain because we can't have the domain being equal to these values here, right? We can't, we can't go to those pi over two places. So the domain is going to be theta is an element of real numbers. Theta is not equal to and then you could list like plus or minus pi over two, plus or minus three pi over two, and so on. So you could go three pi over two, five pi over two, so on, etc. Um, so theta is not equal to, these are the ver vertical asymptotes. I've kind of covered that here. So these are the vertical asymptotes are just pi over two, three pi over two, okay? And the range, hmm, what about the range? Goes all the way down, like it's going forever this way and forever that way. So the range is um, y, such that y is just an element of real numbers because it just carries on forever and ever. Okay, so that's all you really needed to know from this lesson. Um, I guess they thought it would be nice for you to see what it looks like having these values on the axis. It's kind of a little waste of time. I think in my class, I spent most of the time taking up homework from, from the previous lesson and then did about a five minute lesson on the graphs. Okay, so there you have it. Graphs of trigonometric functions using radians. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We're up to about, um, as of this taping, I think about 100 or 810. Get to 1,000, I might do calculus and vectors for you. Hang in there, babies. Bye.